so. You're entirely bonkers. But I'll tell you a secret. All the best people are. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back, and the used sailboat market is going down faster than the Titanic. Now, before we get rolling, I do want to give a huge shout out to my patrons for only $10 a month, ladies and gents. You can get full access to my members area with hundreds of other members all looking to get on the water sooner than later in the most cost-effective manner possible. Now, Christopher Cousteau's my name, sailing is my game, and I'm back today to hurt some feelings. Why? Because facts don't care about your feelings, and neither do I. Now, I'm totally kidding, of course. I'm not here to hurt your feelings. However, I occasionally will, you know, state my opinion on some boats that you might like. Maybe it's your favorite boat, and I'll absolutely trash it. No need to cry in the comments, man. Get the best boat that works for you. And today, we're back over on the wonderful world of yachts, and we're way up in the budget range. We're looking at 55 foot and above for 300k and up now even if that's way out of your price range that's okay pay attention to the things i'm mentioning they will help you find your sailboat regardless of price now when you're up here in this price range there are some additional steps that you should be taking when you're buying your fancy dancy new to you sailboat one of those things is a separate rigging inspection on your vessel this is incredibly incredibly important a lot of times inspections will come back on standing rigging that is 15 or 20 years old they'll say it's fantastic it's still good to go however your insurance company might require it to have been replaced at 15 or 20 years so you need to absolutely find out how old the standing rigging is. Even if it's only 10 years old, you also need to get yourself a rigging inspection. Now, a separate rigging inspection is not too expensive. It's only a few hundred bucks. Stop paying attention to the chick on screen. Look at the rigging, gents, you creep. To stop what you're doing and listen. Now, we also want to get ourselves a separate engine inspection as well as fluid tests so that means an additional person to come on your vessel pull all the fluids run some tests check the ins and outs of the engines do a deep dive on your engine and make sure that the propulsion on your vessel is absolutely 100 percent up to speed and exceeds your wildest dreams and expectations this is an absolute must this will also cost four or five hundred bucks depending on the size of your vessel we also want to make sure that we get ourselves a sailboat survey. Now, you want to do this with any vessel that you purchase, no matter what the cost is. A sailboat inspection, also called a survey, is an absolute must. Most insurance companies are going to require it anyway. And yes, they're expensive. For your 40-foot boat, it's going to cost about 1200 bucks. It sucks. So we always want to try to get to the vessel first. Do a nice visual inspection ourselves, and make sure the vessel is even as it's stated in the listing and it's going to be worth dumping that twelve or thirteen hundred dollars into now when you're up here in this price range these three four five hundred thousand dollar boats it is 100 percent recommended by myself to get yourself two surveys from two different people a survey is not nearly as in-depth as we think they are and you should always be there for the survey be the biggest karen on the planet with the surveyor and just bug the crap out of him and just try to figure out what he's doing what's he looking at what's he looking for what's he noticing what's he seeing yes you're going to be that guy it sucks but it is what it is now when you're trying to find yourself a surveyor there are two survey associations that you should be going for the first one up is SAMS. That stands for the Society of Accredited Marine Surveyors. If I'm sitting down here and I'm buying a boat, let's say in the U.S. Virgin Islands, I just pull up this website. I go right here. I click in USVI. Blam, like magic. I hit enter. Bingo, bango, bongo. Here's my surveyors. Charlotte Amel, I've got a few of them. So 
We've got a, let's see, Todd A. Duff over here is a Sam certified surveyor. We've got ourselves, uh, Steven. There we go. Got ourselves Kenneth. All right. There we go. Now, your other selection is NAMS, the International Association of Marine Surveyors. Same thing. Find a marine surveyor. Boom. I click this little button. Next year, it loads. And I just go right here. I type in USVI. Holy shenanigans. I hit enter. Wow. We're cruising. Maybe we got to hit search and not enter. Okay. I'm an idiot. Got to hit search, not enter. And next year, when it decides to load, we're going to go ahead and find some surveyors. Maybe this is taking an awfully long time here. Maybe the uh, US. Holy smokes. We got it. There we go. Here's one 80 miles from the USVIs. Edgardo here in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Then we got one in Salinas, Fred Long, uh, Florida. So as far as NAMS surveyors in the USVI, huh, nothing close. You're screwed there. But looks like we'd be going with the SAM surveyors. Got a few of them there for you if you're buying a boat in the USVI, just as an example. But those are the two websites you go to find yourself a surveyor. Fairly simple, right, ladies and gents? Now, why has nobody ever told you this? Because everybody on YouTube's trying to gatekeep all this information for some reason. I'm here just trying to get you on the water. And speaking of getting on the water, let's get our happy little behinds back over on the wonderful world of yachts and actually start looking at some darn boats. And just like magic, here we are. We're over on the wonderful world of yachts. Boom. 300K and above price low to high. Moving, cruising, shaking, and baking. Now, in this price range, you have quite a bit of options. A lot of it is going to be determined on what type of sailing are you actually going to be doing out there. Hmm? What is it you're up to? How much experience do you have? How do you see this? Not for sale to U.S. residents while in U.S. waters. I just covered that in yesterday's video. This guy's got the boat flagged in some tax haven. So... The boat needs to go outside the United States of America, land in a different country, i.e. Bahamas, because it's in Fort Lauderdale. 60 mile trip to the Bahamas, do the deal in the Bahamas, U.S. Coast Guard, register the vessel, avoid those taxes yourself, use the tax laws to your advantage and get cruising. Now, this is a 2008 Juno 54 deck salon. I absolutely love the 54 Juno deck salon and it is e nor miss now this one's 300k i can't afford that i'm never going to be able to afford that it's got the master berth up front in the forward section okay we've got a master berth it looks like uh maybe in the stern as well we got a lot going on here a lot of things happening nope that was the same cabin twice okay rock and rolling that's an awfully low bed what happened here probably a two cabin maybe they converted to a three i don't know what's going on but when you're looking at boats like this I always talk about this. These listings don't tell you that much. You start falling in love. Beautiful example of three cabin owner's version. You know, 54 Sun Odyssey plus crew cabin. Ha ha. Blah, blah. Then it just starts going on. It's trying to sell you the boat. You don't even know what the heck is going on yet. You're scrolling. You're seeing pop ups. You're like, what the French toast is going on? It's got a huge draft. 7.6 feet. If your goal is to cruise the Bahamas, not a solid plan. You're going to ground the boat. That's too deep. You're going to hit the sand. It's okay. It's not going to be in the world, but hey, it's got a 110 horsepower engine. Then he's going to go into a bunch of details. Does any of that matter? No. Call him up. Ask him. Hey, my man, the boat's from 2008. How old's that standing rigging? How old are those sails on the vessel? Is the boat owner negotiable on price? How often is it used? What was it used for? How many owners has it had? Look at this. Gosh darn guy's got himself a washing machine. Of course you do. Because you're buying a $300,000 gosh darn boat. That's over a, a quarter of a million dollars. And look, we've got ourselves a generator. This is about a $20,000 generator, ladies and gents. Boom. One thing I dislike on these 54 deck salons is this stepped up seating area. I wish this was all just flat. But hey, whatever. I'll use it as a pillow when I'm sleeping right there. Then when I heal to port side, I'm going to roll right off, hit the floor. Ask me how I know. I'll tell you, I've done it a hundred thousand times, but hey, the Chanel 54 deck salon. Let's plop on over to sailboat data. Check out some numbers. And 
just like magic, once again, here we are. Now, I wish this boat had a swim platform and not a sugar scoop. Haters going to hate, but it is what it is. And we have a wide variety of layouts. This is insanity. We don't need four sleeping quarters in back, another two up front, and another one in the bow. That's just nonsensical stupidity. I would turn the entire front of this vessel on this version, this be my master, I'd turn this whole thing into another master suite. I'd probably, mm, I'd launch this bed, I'd launch this bed, I'd do some built-in cabinets, you know, maybe if uh, you got a wife, you could build her like a makeup room, I don't know, do something fancy with it. So, we got 48 and a half feet at the waterline, 55 length overall, not terrible, just over six foot difference there. 15.92 beams. So she's got a huge beam. She's wide. She's big. She's wide. There, I was about to say a bad joke. First built 2004. 100 horsepower. Ah, uh, you know, I wish it was a bit bigger of an engine for a boat that weighs 38,000 pounds. Okay. But it does have a, almost a 200 gallon fuel tank and 246 gallons of water. So that's good. We can go quite the distance with it. 1.91 on the cap size and 28.82 on the comfort ratio. So she's going to be a heavy boat. That's pretty heavy. Uh, take a little bit of wind to get going, but she'll still be fairly fast. Um, it is a bit older of a design. You do get a lot of benefits though, because it is that deck salon. So it gets more light, raised coach roof, raised cabin sole, all of those wonderful things that you'd find on the hybrid deck salons. I'd take it. Um, for 300k, wouldn't be my choice, but hey, everyone's different. We got, as you know, 519. There's no reason to look at this boat. For $300,000, absolutely, 100%, no, and no, and then no. You can pick up this boat for about 170 if you just buy it with an X charter. So, uh, yeah, I'll pull that up and I'll show you just to show you that I'm right. So this one they're asking 300k for we go to the x charters kablam kabang we got the previous version for 179k the 509 now we can go up to the 519 get it for 235 grand that's 65 grand less guess what i'm doing i'm going with the 2018 it's newer it's 65 grand less hello <laughs> stop doing that to yourself don't buy that boat it's overpriced you're welcome we're moving right along. Beneteau First 50. Again, not a boat I'm buying for 300K. The 50 foot mono holes, just your basic standard ones. They're pretty standard. Now up here in this price range, you can see things like catamarans. This catamaran is not $300,000. This is going to be a partial share. Fractional ownership. Kablamo, kabumo, kabango. We're not looking at it. Cruising right along. We got the 439 for 300K seems wildly overpriced why is it wildly overpriced well it's in texas it's a 439 2016 we're not buying this boat for 300k you're not buying it no one's buying it this boat will be available if they keep that price next year and the year after and the year after that so don't even worry about it not even worth looking at you can find those for far less money remember i got my budget 300 and above so we're not seeing those for less money right now but you can absolutely find them we have a 2021 Oceanus 38.1. Holy shenanigans. It's $300,000. I absolutely love the 38.1. I've done numerous videos on them. It's one of my favorite midsize cruisers. I'd be thrilled to death. If anybody wants to buy me one, give it to me. We can be best friends for life. I'd be super, super pumped. But in reality, again, not worth 300K. Chris, why is it not worth 300K? Well, let's go to the X Charter site. Boom. Moorings Yacht Brokerage. Go right there. Go to make, go to Beneteau, bingo, bango, hit search now, yada, yada, Oceanus 38, 129K, done deal. I get the previous version. Why am I getting the previous version? Basically the exact same boat, but this one has the removable bulkhead. This whole bulkhead comes out wide open. It's amazing. Versus this one, it doesn't. They just have one wide door. This one is actually meant to be removed. In that particular vessel, it's on there. Maybe it's not on this one. This one's 139. Clickety, clickety, clack. Let's go. Uh, let's see if it's on this one. Okay, it's on that one. So I'm going to pull it up on a different site and show you. Hold, please. Here we are on the wonderful world of b b b better toe. We're cruising. We're bruising. We're shaking. We're baking. We're looking. Here we go. Right here. 
clickety click let's go come on chop chop boom you see that the whole entire forward bulkhead comes out so what am i doing i'm going to the mooring street x charter bam i'm getting a 2017 for 129 or 139 i'm not buying a 38.1 for 300k just saved you a ridiculous amount of money just saved you like 175k you're welcome super chats are always appreciated so we're not buying that boat makes no darn sense especially not for that kind of money this boat too old we're not buying boats from the 70s for 300k knock it off don't care if you own that boat stop it again we're not buying these too old of a boat we're not buying customs either could be a nice boat fantastic good for them it's located in turkey we're not buying custom boats ladies and gents there's even price drops on custom boats we're not buying custom boats you know why we're not buying custom boats because it's ridiculous it's just somebody trying to reinvent the wheel somebody else has already done it better i'm sure this guy did a ton of work on it looks like he probably put a lot of hard work that's an awful lot of wood i mean it looks gorgeous amazing we're not buying it so moving cruising shaking bacon 2010 Genoa 57 what in the world is with that photo cruising right along here again a lot of wood a lot of wood a lot of maintenance nice wide decks oh he's doing the teak right there yeehaw good for you those okay so here's a pro tip when you buy yourself a dual helm vessel you don't need these giant wheels all right go down about five inches it's going to open up your companion way it's going to make the boat feel bigger that's what we're going for and you read it the teak this is very pretty I like this these little chairs are cool um nice little boat but 300k is that carpet what 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 you have carpet on your boat man this is a nice this is actually nice it's looking good here especially for 2010 nice galley you know loving it digging it holy ugh. okay rich people lifestyles of the rich and famous right here here we go what washing machine oh my gosh a dishwasher and a washing machine what in the french toast holy shenanigans look at that master suite jeepers creepers wow that's a lot of boat for 300k let's plop on over to where kids sailboat data and take a look at the numbers and just like magic I'm right here we've got a bunch of different versions i'm always going for the one with the least amount of cabins uh so it's not going to be this one look maybe we got dinghy storage in the boat jesus okay Bad news bears. We got an eight foot discrepancy. We're not doing that. This boat instantly gets a thumbs down. We're moving right along. That's too big of a discrepancy. Too much wasted space. We're cruising. We're shaking. We're baking. We're not buying a boat from 1976. Here's another one. We're not doing it. We're not doing this boat either. We're not doing 90s boats. We got the 46.1. Again, here's how you save money. Oceanus 46.1. Fantastic boat. Go to the X Charter site. Boom. Cruise right along. Oceanus 46.1, 335. Whoa. This one, this one's actually cheaper than an X Charter. Holy shenanigans. That is impressive. Let's do, okay, hold on. Hold, hold, something's wrong. Price low to high, 46.1. Okay, then the 46.1 just disappeared. Maybe. 335. Wow. Oh, it's a 2020. Wow. This is a scenario where it's worth actually buying the privately owned one and it's properly priced. It's also, of course, located in Croatia, but, uh, and these are all stock photos from Beneteau's website, but, uh, okay. If I want to look at Beneteau's website, let's just go there. Since this idiot broker is just doing that. We'll just do that ourselves. Hey, here we are. We're over on the 46.1 website. Yeehaw. We got a video. We got, ooh, look, exact same photos that we were just seeing. Hey, we just saw this photo on the guy's listing along with this one. Like, if you can't even take your own photos, just go play in traffic, dude. Uh, but the Oceanus 46.1, absolutely love this boat. Everybody knows I love Benito's. They do a fantastic job. Um, they will take you anywhere in the world that you want to go, regardless of what some uh, lake sailors might tell you on YouTube. Let's pull up some numbers, shall we? Here we are. The good old sailboat data. 43.44 length at the waterline. 47.9 overall. Not terrible. 
Uh, we got a 15 foot beam. That's pretty good. I'd like to see it at 16, but 15 is good. You know, we can make that work. First built 2017, 57 horsepower, 23,000 pounds. That's about in line with what a boat would weigh. 53 gallons of fuel. Wish it was bigger. 100 gallons of water. So if we're thinking long distance, let's go ahead and add an extra fuel tank. Now, right now you're telling yourself, but Chris, I'm going to sail. I don't need to have fuel on my vessel. Knock it off, man. That tells me that you haven't sailed much. Oftentimes, the conditions don't allow for throwing up the sails and cruising, shaking, and baking along, so you're going to have to motor sail. So if your goal is to go long distances, we're adding fuel tanks to make sure we get about 100 gallons on board. That's the number we want to go with. Again, we're not doing customs. Not happening. The Hanze 458. Now, personal preference on this boat, similar to a Beneteau, dual helms, swim platform, all those lovely, amazing things. Very, very wide open when it comes to this size of a Hanze. It's amazing. Look at this. I mean, pff, this, this looks better than my condo. Kind of pisses me off. Um, and I pay more a month for my condo than I probably would if I just financed this damn boat. Now I've just pissed myself off for the day. Great job, guys. Thanks for doing this video with me. Super pumped now that I hate my condo and love this boat. Anywho, you can scroll on down. As usual, this clown face isn't going to tell you anything. So what are we doing? We're going right to sailboat data. The magician's back. Here we are. Right here. Six foot discrepancy. Not a fan. Uh, only a 14 foot beam. Probably going to go ahead and pass just based on those numbers. But get on it in, per in person and see kind of what you think of that usable space on board. Maybe it's big enough for you. I don't like that big discrepancy. Uh, it's a 40 foot boat. But I'm paying 47 foot slip, 46 foot slip. Not stellar. 57 horsepower. What I'd expect for a boat that weighs that much. 55 gallons of fuel, 119 gallons of water. 1.9 in the cap size, 27.39. Not the boat I'm going with. Love it. But uh, I don't like that big discrepancy. Everybody should know that by now. And here we go. We're into the world of older catamarans. Now, when it comes to vessels of this age, you're coming up on the 20 year mark. Okay. So it's going to require a refit going to need to get standing rigging, running rigging, sails, unless it's already been done. Now I call the Fountain Peugeot's the Jetsons of the catamaran world. It reminds me of George and the Jetsons. If you know when that cartoon was from, we're probably similar in age. I wouldn't buy this. It's not a good idea to buy budget catamarans, in my opinion, just based off the year and the amount of upkeep. Now it can be, of course, depending on what they've done to it. This guy says the Bahia is a legendary catamaran and it's very rare to find an owner's version on the market. Okay, first of all, in the first sentence, you just slide right to my gosh darn face. It's not rare at all. So I'm done reading your nonsense because you already lied to me and I'm over it and I'm moving right along. New year, we're holding these brokers to a much higher standard. Now this boat, very nice boat, not a boat you see. Come on, clickety clickety clack. Now. These are very, very nice boats. It's a fast boat. It's more of a race boat. It's very, very narrow. It's not the boat I'm buying for 300K to go full time on. Race boat. See what I mean? Giant helm here. Okay? And this is quite the tarp. You've now made yourself look like a uh, homeless encampment right on the water. Lucky to everybody else around you. Said no one ever. The Hans 445. We just did that, right? 458, 445. We're spending 300K. We're not buying 2012 45 footers. Better boats out there. Get yourself the Oceanus 46.1, 48.1, something like that. Grand Soleil. Live them, love them, learn them. Amazing boats. Race boat. Not really for the full time live aboard sailor. Not going to be the most comfortable thing, but they are absolutely fantastic. So more Hanza on the market right here. Again, an older catamaran. Don't do that. We got the Lagoon. 420. This would be perfect. Coastal cruising, island hopping here in the Caribbean. 2008, 300K. Not terrible price. Is it the best catamaran in the world? No, it's not. Does it offer a lot of room? It absolutely does. A ton of room. And by a ton, I mean a ton. But again, Lagoon had those issues with the bulkheads. I think it was the Lagoon 42. Maybe it was the 440. These boats can take you across oceans and stuff. You just got to do a lot of due diligence in the old world of your surveys, your engine inspection, your rigging. This one, you'd want to inspect those bulkheads too. 
but it's got a fantastic layout and 300k it's not a bad price for a 2008 42 foot catamaran as a matter of fact that's a fantastic price for one of those but you've got to do your due diligence when it comes to making sure the boat's in good shape we had a lagoon 410 s2 2006 for 300k new arrival and the guy even watermarked his photos like i'm gonna steal your photo you absolute dingling ding dong now this one's more of like a they would call this the performance catamaran uh your table's a little bit i don't what's what's this photo doing here this arch is ugly and i i don't i don't understand what's going on here um anyway overall nice boat 300k not bad look this is all worn out too again because of the year we just got a lot of stuff to consider there we're thinking catamaran and make sure you're comparing it to mono holes in the 55 foot range see what works the best for you 100 percent up to you you know get the boat that works the best for you not for me not for george not for Susie down the street for yourself all right sponsored that's why i'm not clicking this it's also 700k so we're going to see a bunch more of these lagoons lagoon 380 2017 that's nice smaller catamaran but it's 2017 and it's the 380 so somewhat affordable you know but personal preference you know is this going to be the greatest sailing machine ever known no it's going to be awesome at coastal cruising island hopping living in the caribbean yeah it's going to give you a ton of room this kind of sucks a little bit small right there it's the 380 and you can get an awful lot of monohull for 380 and it's got a double sink i i just had a stroke I'm currently stroking out full time right now. Uh, I hate double six and I hate this cabin. So really just choose what works the best for you uh, in this price range. You've got a lot to choose from. So I'm not going to keep clicking on the same boats. You're going to start to see a lot of the same models. Now, this might make sense. Fountain Peugeot, Lucia, 2016. It's newer. It's bigger. It's brighter. It's wider. It's open. It's, it's also a tent with an ugly solar panel arch. I mean, how can you not find a better place for your solar panels? Stop doing this shit. This is so stupid. Like let's, and your photos are trash. Now I'm this, you know, when I go through Yacht World, I start getting pissed off because the amount of no effort put in by these brokers is astoundingly absurd. It's just insanity. Um, X yachts, fantastic boats. They make great boats. They're very, very fast live them love them learn them it's more of a race boat they can also be comfortable but you get a traveler right here in the middle of the cockpit i.e race boat could you buy one live on it full time absolutely are there more comfortable boats of course there is this is a rape boat race boat it's loud bang clang bang boom that's what you're gonna hear on this boat it's fast it moves it shakes it's bakes it's 300k bavaria 56 cruiser now, Bavaria 2010 prior, not a fan. 2012, they kind of got their stuff together. So we got a Bavaria 56 Cruiser. No reason to keep looking right here. Is there? No. Because we're never going to get to the interior. Okay. Oh, we got us right to the interior. I like this midship galley right here. Ooh, kind of a fan of that. I like this. Just flatten that table. Make that a giant bed. Good to go. Let's go to sailboat data. Take a gander. See what this one looks like. Bavaria 56 Cruiser. Here we come. Here we are. We're about to be disappointed. 51 length of waterline, 54 overall. That's nice. That's not that bad of a discrepancy. It's got the 16 foot beam on her. Living it, loving it, learn it. First built 2013. 100 horsepower, 74 gallons of fuel, 40,000 pounds. I wish it had a little bit more umph in the old uh, horsepower department. 182 gallons of water, 1.82 on capsize, 31.3 digging it i like it i like the numbers i like the layout i like the midship galley it's more towards the forward of the vessel i like these helms this is nice and wide open this looks like it's meant for someone that's about three foot tall take a different angle of that photo um this is nice this is nice we're looking good we are looking good that's an awfully big step right there i'm launching out of that thing this is a hand railing so you don't go flying all over the cockpit um or the salon i mean yeah, I like it. I'm into it. You know, it's a lot of money. Um, but hey, that might work for you. Pretty good price. 300k for that boat. 2014. That's nice. We've moved up. Now, we got a 2023 390 Grand Large. Fantastic boat. I love the 390s, the 460s, the 440s, the Grand Larges. I love them. But we're not buying 2023 boats. Chris, why not, man? 
Seems like such a good deal, man. It's a brand new boat. Well, ladies and gents, your boat is going to lose about 50% of the overall depreciation in the first five years. You buy a brand new boat, guess who's eating that? You're going to eat that. This boat's going to be worth 200K, just a couple of years, and you're going to eat all that loss. So unless you're buying this bad boy under an LLCC, trying to do some tax write-offs, things like that, not buying 40-foot boats for 300K, not doing it. You know, going for the best bang for the buck. Now, we got some more catamarans. Catamarans are jam. Catamarans are amazing. But you're going to find the 39s. Sea wind catamarans, I'm not a huge fan. Um, Oceanus 48, same thing. You can just plop on over to the old uh, charter website here. Oceanus 48, 180K, 185. Uh, let's see. 180K on the X charter site. Privately owned one, 305. What am I going to do? Buy myself an X charter. You're welcome. Just saved you 120K. Again, super chats are appreciated. Love them. X yachts, more of a racer. Another catamaran. Sun Odyssey 54. Already covered it. Another 54. What are you noticing? Starting to see a lot of the same boats. Hans 545. Starting to see a lot of the same boats with nothing but price drops, ladies and gents. The Bavaria C45 2024. Chris. Why aren't we buying this boat? I just covered it, George. We're not buying brand new boats because we're not going to eat that replacement or that uh, that uh, depreciation right off the bat. Let somebody else eat that and we'll buy it in a few years, not us. We're also about not, not buying schooners. We're not buying a boat from 1958, you lunatic. Not for 300K. What the heck in the world's wrong with you? No, we're not doing it. We're moving. We're cruising. We're shaking. We're baking. Again, first three, sponsored. We're not looking at sponsored. That's next charter boat. Now, Sun Odyssey 440, same thing, 2020. You can just go over to the Charter website. You can get something. The Oceanus 45, 185K. Saved you a ton of money. You're welcome. Once again, Bavaria Vision 42, 2020. Uh, I'm just going to go with the next Charter. So we're kind of stuck right now. And this funny X Charter is going to make more sense a lot of the time, except for that Bavaria for whatever it was, 56 Cruiser. Got the Nader Swan again, more of a race boat. Sun Odyssey 410 for 307k. <laughs> Get real, man. You can go right over here to the moorings. I can go right here. I can go to make, you know, Sun Odyssey 419, 109k, 119k. It's, <laughs> this one's 300k. I just saved you $200,000. You're welcome. You could spend $100,000 invested into the x charter and you'd still come out a hundred grand ahead you're welcome round of applause for chris almost like i've done this before a few thousand times classic motor sale not from 1936 and not for 300k the island packet now i'm not a huge fan of island packets why not chris well because i think it's an old outdated design and i think it's more boat than 99 percent of people need they're very, very slow. They roll all over the place, and it's a lot of money for what you get, in my opinion. Very, very small cockpit. Where do you spend most of your time? In the cockpit. Fantastic boats. They're made well. They're built well. Um, but there's nothing about them that I think is like, oh my gosh, this is the bee's knees. An Island Pack at 420 is a tiny boat. Let's go take a g -g 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 gander. And here we are. Like magic. We got a 37 foot length of the waterline, 14 foot beam, 45 length overall. First built 1999. A lot of water, a lot of fuel, small horsepower for a boat that weighs that much, just like I was referring to other boats. 1.84 and 34. Now, I've been sitting in marinas in Nassau before on a Genoa 40 footer, looking across the harbor at an island pack at 42 and 44. And every time a cruise ship went by, it made these boats look like they were in a hurricane. These things roll like no tomorrow. It's meant for a specific dip. Uh, it's meant for a specific type of sailing. They say that they're more comfortable at sea in heavy weather. Well, we got a lot of technology these days. This is 2002. You shouldn't be buying boats from 2002 for 300K. You shouldn't also be caught in rough storms most of the time. For most people, that boat is more boat than you're ever going to need. And it's just not going to be needed for you. Now, we got another Leopard 38. Not going to look at it. Before 500 grand large. Now, this is a very, very nice boat, and it's a 2015. So, we've gone quite a bit newer. Like, I like it a lot. I like the color, even. Um, huge swim platform. I mean, yeah, giant cockpit. Look at that. It was almost like a 
Look at that. It folds up. Get yourself a twin size bed right there. That's perfect for me because I sleep in the damn cockpit all of the time. I like these. The fours have done a really, really good job. Holy shenanigans. We got the fruit fly nest invasion. <gasps> We're going to have mutant fruit flies if you do this on your boat. Don't ever do this. That's just going to invite bugs all over your boat. Nice, wide open. Look at the room on this one. Look at the fishing poles. The guy fishes. I already like him. We're already friends. This tablecloth can go. We're not playing, um, what's that? Uh, I don't know what that cartoon is with the starfish. But anyway, that's what that reminds me of. Um, SpongeBob SquarePants. Yeah, that's not us. Let's go check out the sailboat data on the DeFore 500 Grand Large. Here we are. Shaking, baking, cruising, bruising. 45 length of the waterline, 49. So we come in under that 50 foot. That's nice. Almost a 16 foot fiend. First built 2011. She weighs 33, 34,000 pounds. Little light on the horsepower. Nice fuel tankage. Nice water tankage. 1.96 on the cap size, 28.57. I like it. I'm into it. Maybe it works for you. More money than I can spend. Hey, here's another one. It's probably the same damn boat. A 2002 Puffin? <laughs> no. Uh, another Lagoon Catamaran, the Lagoon 400. Lagoons are your thing. That's fine. They're great. You know, just pick the right one. The one that works for you. You know, we're not doing this boat. A little day sailor. You know, the DeFore 460 Grand Large, fantastic boat, but you can actually get these for less money than 300. You can find them for about 250 a lot of times right now. Fantastic boat. I absolutely love them. And now we're smack dab, really getting into uh, catamaran territory. If we go up much more money, there's going to be a clear winner here. So the 560 Grand Large. Holy shenanigans. What an absolute stunner of a boat with a price drop. This boat is amazing. And it is an absolute beast. It is huge. I mean, next look, it's got a kitchen. For the stern of the vessel. Just fry up your hibachi grill. Do some uh, Benihana style type stuff there. Amazing. I love it. Love it. Let's go to the inside, please. Today, please. Pretty please. There we go. God, what a terrible photo. That's such a bad photo. Such a horrible photo of the inside. Such a bad, bad job. Jesus, dude. Turn on the lights, you idiot. What? Uh, let's go to say about data before my brain explodes. Now, for some reason, I can't find the darn boat on sailboat data. So if somebody can, link it in the comments below for me. Pretty please. And I will pin the comments. But this boat is absolutely enormous. I 100% love this vessel. And for this price, this this is kind of what you got to start comparing to a catamaran. So now you got a 560 grand large with horrible photos, but 310K, you can get yourself a much, much older, like 40 foot catamaran. It's definitely worth comparing the two. Now, unfortunately, in a lot of places right now, it is currently winter time and it's absolutely freezing. Now, luckily for me, I live here in the Caribbean and it's currently like 87 degrees outside. But for the rest of you, one of the absolute most amazing ways to stay warm is to hop right over to my website. I got some amazing hoodies on sale right now. Check this out. Comes in black and white. Look at that. My brand new logo, made it myself, comes in black or white. Best way to stay warm in the winter. Head to ChasingLatitudes.com. Pick yourself up a hoodie. While you're there, you know, grab my ebook and my spreadsheet as well. Good stuff happening on the website. Go take a gander. Look, we also got our little mugs over here. Some t-shirts. I mean, come on. If you head over to the consulting tab, boom, my brand new ebook and spreadsheet right there, $14.99. I mean, that book alone and that spreadsheet is going to save you $20,000 and it's only $14. Bucks. It's an absolute no-brainer. Brought to you by my sponsor, my darn self, not sponsored, just awesome. Back to Yacht World, we go. So here we are, we're back. Now, as you can see, we're moving up in price here. Things are getting pretty serious, kind of, sort of. It's a lot of the same boats being repeated, right? So the 56 Cruiser, some off-the-ball brands, 56 Cruiser, a lot of different catamarans. In this price range, it's going to start to come down to a very serious of serious questions you have to ask yourself. What is the purpose of you buying the vessel? Are you going to coastal cruise? Or are you going to island hop? 
Do you have pets? Do you have family? Would you prefer a catamaran? Have you sailed a catamaran? Do you understand the difference in the movements between a catamaran sailing and a monohull sailing? Now with a lot of these Benetos and even a lot of these catamarans, oftentimes you're better off going and checking out the X charters. You're going to save yourself hundreds of thousands of dollars if you grab yourself an X charter. Not all X charters are bad. You can get some amazing deals. Look, Leopard 38, 2011, 200K. Leopard 40, 343K, 2016. Um, there's a lot of great deals to be had on the X charter market. So in this three hundred dollars to $400,000 range, those are really the big questions you have to ask yourself. Do you want to go with a catamaran or do you want to go with a monohull? And what size? You can get a larger monohull for the same price of a smaller catamaran, but because it's a catamaran, it's going to feel like you have more room on the catamaran and everything is on the same level. Now, once you go way up in price, so if we jump forward quite a bit, Let's go up to the $400,000 and above range here. Hit enter. There we go. We're going to price these bad boys low to high. Now you're going to start seeing a lot of brand new boats for sale in this price range. Don't buy a brand new boat. You're wasting your money. You're going to lose a ton of money instantly with depreciation. Now you can get bigger catamarans in this price range, but you're going older. So you're getting a bigger catamaran for 400 K, but you've gotten older and now you have to again, Consider standing rigging, running rigging, dinghy, EPIRB, AIS, radar, all of those good things. Don't buy anything new. You're going to lose too much money. Uh, and it's really going to start to become a personal preference. Some of these boats are absolutely stunning. Like this to 441s, an amazing vessel. But it's going to drop $100,000 in price in 18 months from now. You know, we got a Oceanus 55 here. Um, from 2016. I mean, that's a huge boat. The only reason you'd buy that boat is if you're going to live on it full time and actually use it. So you're actually going to be going all over the world on it, crossing oceans, doing things like that. The Oceanus 55 is a stunner. It also comes with a stunning price tag. My happy little rump never ever going to be able to afford. Now, when you get into this range, 400 K 500 K, we're talking serious, serious money on a sailboat. And there's a sailboat you should really, really consider. And that, my friends, is the Moody Dexalons. Now, occasionally you can find these, the 45 Dexalon 2010, for right around 365K. This hands down for me is the boat I would buy over every single boat that we just saw and we just went through. This is the boat that you see at the beginning of a lot of my videos cruising across the Atlantic Ocean with the giant hard top on it. This boat is absolutely stunning. One of my clients actually just bought this boat and I'll be flying on over to Greece to be able to actually sail on this boat, my dream boat of all time. But like I said, when you're in this price range, you've got some stunners here. You can get this. This particular one was 365. You can find them for 500 and it's absolutely a vessel to consider again, depending on what you're going for with your sailing goals. In my opinion, it's the best of both worlds. It's a true deck salon. So you get the best of a model hull and the best of a catamaran combined in one. That's the boat I'm buying. If that's the kind of money that I'm spending. Now, if you actually do need help getting on the water, you can head right over to my website up in the top left here. Just tick consulting. You can go right on down here. Now I offer several different consulting packages. So I can offer a, I offer a one-on-one -on -one, one-time consult. It's currently on sale for a hundred dollars. This is the package that you would get if you are interested in a particular vessel and you would like me to go over that vessel with you and tell you my thoughts about it. Or if you just kind of need help getting started as to where to even begin boat shopping, the one time one on one consult is by far the best option. And it also grants you access to my members area with several hundred other members all looking to get on the water sooner than later. Now, if you've kind of made it through the boat shopping process, you've got several boats that you want to consider. Maybe you're just getting started and you're trying to get all these things together. You need help with insurance, surveys, things like that. You can get the consulting package. 
that's currently on sale for 375 you get three different consults plus the access to the members area as well and it's a fantastic package for somebody who's been boat shopping and maybe you're kind of lost can't see the forest for the trees anymore or the trees for the forest whatever that analogy is and then there's the absolute best package the 24 7 complete consulting package that is exactly what it sounds like 24 hours a day seven days a week you can get in direct contact with me in real time we will go over everything related to your boat shopping needs from start to finish so boat shopping, what boats to look at, what boats are going to fit your needs, and so on. We'll set up surveys for you. We'll get your insurance. We'll plan out your first couple months of sailing, where you should be getting your boat marina ad for your first 30 or 60 days, and things like that. Now, that does not include me delivering your boat 3,000 miles. This is sailboat consulting. I'm helping you purchase the correct vessel without making a mistake. So, those are the three packages that I currently offer. And with any one of those packages, I'll kick in the sailboat book and my new spreadsheet. Get you on the water sooner than later in the most cost-effective manner possible. I mean, it's really the best bang for the buck that there is out there. Now, I often do help people deliver their sailboats throughout the globe. When those deliveries do pop up, I can oftentimes bring members along with me. So. If you get the 24 seven complete consulting package, you may get the opportunity as well to come and sail on one of my deliveries with me where I'm helping a brand new owner get his boat from A to B. Pretty simple, right? Now, don't forget to leave a like. Likes are free, it costs you nothing, and leave a comment after the video ends down below. It really, really helps the YouTube algorithm and I would sincerely, sincerely appreciate it. Love you guys all. You are the best audience on YouTube and I will see you all on the next video. Thank you so much for watching.